day today. At least it's not raining, I guess. All right, what did I do today? People often talk about sending people into space like a regular person. When can we start going? Although I guess it's really soon. This one says, world's first all civilian mission to space. Inspiration for named second crew member. Haley Arsenault, physician assistant to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and pediatric cancer survivor to represent Hope on historic flight. Two remaining seats on mission still available to the general public until February 28th. That's gotta be a cool once in a lifetime experience and it says here, quote, it's an incredible honor to join the inspiration for crew. The seat represents the hope that St. Jude gave me and continues to give families from around the world who, like me, find hope when they walk through the doors of St. Jude, said Arsenal. When I was just 10 years old, St. Jude gave me the opportunity to grow up. Now I am part of fulfilling my dreams of working at the research hospital and traveling around the world. Yeah, talk about traveling around the world, literally all up in space, I guess you can see everything. It's incredible to be part of this mission that is not only raising crucial funds for the life-saving work of St. Jude, but also introducing new supporters to the mission and showing cancer survivors that anything is possible. That's really cool. Basically someone going through all these adversities in life and getting this opportunity. And they had like an interview and stuff like that, I guess, with how surprised the person was initially. And they made a comment too. Imagine potentially thinking, should I or shouldn't do this? Wouldn't you immediately jump and say, yes, let's do it. I'm gonna have the first artificial joint in space, the first prosthesis in space. And I did have to tell my orthopedic surgeon when I saw him last week. They gave me the background of the mission and, um, and kind of told me who would be on board. And they asked if I wanted to have one of the seats on board going to space. And I remember I laughed. I was like, what? Are, are you serious? And, um, and I got off the phone and, well, first of all, I said, yes. Yes, thank you, please, like send me to space. And then um, and then I, I kind of paused, I was like, let me talk to my mom. My answer is yes, but let me just make sure that she's not adamantly opposed. Um, and so I called my mom, and she was actually working from home that day, FaceTimed her, and, uh, and I said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's true. I was just invited to go to space. <laughs> and, uh, and she had a very similar reaction, um, but, but I said, I can't pass up this opportunity, it's once in a lifetime. And she said, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, you have to do it. Although in terms of taking the opportunity to go into space, I still remember that one story where there was something about who wants to go into space, but you're gonna live there forever. You'll never come back down. Now that's a different story, I guess, in terms of whether or not you would take the opportunity. And back down to earth, this one was kind of interesting. It sounded like with this article, the way it was written, there's some places planning to find ways to get drones to fly near aircraft, like traditional manned ones, as if it's a passenger jet, for example. It says, Saab heads EU industry push for a drone collision avoidance kit. The European Commission has approved Saab to lead the bloc's quest for a detect and avoid kit that will allow aerial drones to fly safely alongside civilian air traffic. So when they say alongside, that's what I'm wondering, do they just mean in the air in general? Because I know in some places like here, they consider in the air is like one feet in the ground. Or are they talking about like a passenger plane? Because I know there will be drones that will do that eventually. European Union officials awarded a $26 million grant to the effect last December, which a Swedish company got approval to announce on February 19th. The European Detect and Avoid System effort is one of the RAF initiatives under the European Defense Industrial Development Program, which spreads seed money far and wide on the continent in the search of promising defense technology. Although they might not be talking about just regular civilian stuff, this one says the technology brings a key piece of safety assurance to enable more autonomy and efficiency into aviation, enabling unmanned and remotely operated aircraft to take off in a broader sense. While the project focus is on military unmanned aircraft, the technology is fully applicable to also civilian systems. A lot of this stuff actually are started with military stuff in mind and then eventually it just trickles into the general broad civilian lifestyle, I guess you could say. It still makes me think of that point again. If everything's going autonomous in this case, will you actually still need all these over the top regulations and stuff? For someone, for example, I could imagine, let's just say, I don't know, a farm field or something like that. If someone puts something automated, it comes up, captures stuff, goes back in, would you need like a license and stuff to do that? Or no, would it be just put it out there and go do it?
See you guys later.